Hi, I'm Gab from One Code Camp, and in this video, we'll be learning how to modify arrays and how to use intermediate array methods. So let's open up your code editors and let's get coding. All right, so to start our discussion, let's create our index.html file. There we go. And also our um, app.js file right here. And of course, we have to connect them both. So let me put a boilerplate right here with the exclamation point shortcut. And then I'll connect my, whoopsie. And I'm going to con connect my app.js into my index.html file with the script tag. Keep it there. And the source is app.js. Go, And they should be um, connected right away. So I'm going to open this up with my live server. And there it is on my live server. Let me close this up. And let's see if everything is working properly. Let's try to print something in a console. Hello, right there. And let's open this um, inspect element and go to console. And there is our hello. Everything is working fine so far. So to discuss array methods, of course, we're going to need to create an array. So let me delete this. And let's make an array of some common fruits. So we're going to say fruits. And this is going to be on some brackets right here. And we're going to store strings. We'll say banana. Banana right there. And some orange. Next, uh, maybe an apple. And mango. Let's keep everything in the same um, data type. There we go. We have an array with four elements. So the first um, built-in method that we're going to discuss is the length property. So what length does, so let me show you what that is. Let's try to print that out to this console.log and fruits.length. So what it's going to do is it's going to print out the length of these fruits right here. So there is a length for this array. It has four elements and therefore it has a length of four. So that is the length property. Next is the two string method. The two string method, as the name suggests, converts these arrays into strings. So let me put some comments here for organization. Let's say this is the length. Length. Uh, I can't spell properly. Length property. Property. There we go. And next will be the two string. There we go. So to use the two string, let's again print it out. Let's console. So uh, log and then our fruits, which is our RA. That's fruits dot to string. And now there is our array elements printed out in a string and it is separated by a comma. So the two string method automatically puts a comma separator in between our elements there. So that is the two string method, which is also built in in our arrays. Next, we have the at method. That is the at method right there. It's another way to access an element within our uh, within our array. So let's store these things in, in a variable. So let's do some let here and say it's a fruit. And from our previous video, we have discussed that we can access some array elements using the indexes. So that's just that one. And then um, we give it the index number, which starts at zero. So this will be index zero. This will be one, two, and three. And if we have more elements, um, then that will be numbered accordingly. So let's say we want the, um, the element at index two. So that will be zero, one, two. This should be the apple. So let's print that console.log fruit. And there is our apple right there. And the at method actually functions just like this too. 
So let's say the fruit is now, um, actually we're not going to see the difference if we do it this way. So let's just print that like this. Let's say if fruits dot at, it's not flat, it should be at right there. And then the index. And there is our apple right there. It printed out the exact same element, just like what we did here. So that is how we use the add element. They're just the same. Um, the, on the only difference is the syntax, but the return value is also the same. Now let's look back at this two string method. This is how that was printed out. You have the banana, comma, orange, comma, apple, and then comma, mango. But what if you want a different separator other than a comma? You have another built-in method for that, which is the join. So it functions just as uh, the two-string method, but the only difference is you can select or you can specify the separator that you want. Let's try to print that. So that's console.log. And then fruits.join. And then inside the parentheses you will give it an argument of whatever character or string you want uh, to be used as your separator let's say we want this asterisk right here and there is our string the our array elements are now joined in a string or printed out in a string but with the specified character here which is the asterisk as its separator and it's no longer um, that comma by default. So that is our join method. Next, although we've already discussed the array methods for adding and removing an elements, it'll be great to have a review of those two. So first, to remove an element, we have the pop method right there. And let's store the popped out quote unquote popped out element inside a variable. So let's say we have, let's start in our let and then let's say it's popped fruit and it's going to be fruits dot a pop. Remember this pop method returns the last or it, it pops out that last element in your array. So let's try to print that out. So that's console log and then our popped fruit right there should be popped there is our popped fruit and there we have our mango because this is the last um, element in our fruits array next we have we have an R, a method to remove an element of course we also have a method to add an element so that is our push method right there and let's say we want to push the kiwi right there. So we removed the mango with our pop method. And now we want to add kiwi. Let's try to print out our array, our new array. So that's console.log and then fruits. And there is our new modified array. We have banana, orange, apple, and kiwi in the last um, element or in the last index. Now the thing with our push and pop method is that you only have um, control over the last element. What if let's say you want to maybe remove or add something in the first index or the first element. So we also have some built in method for that. First to remove or get the item or the element in our first index, you also have the shift method and this shift method shifts the entire array to the left one index to the left and of course one element there is going to be displaced out of our array and it returns that element that was shifted out of our array so let's see that in action so let's say we have all that say shifted fruit equals fruits dot shift And let's print out that shifted fruit. And then shifted right there, shifted fruit. And there is our element that was shifted out of our array. array. And if we 
print our array again. Oops, I think I missed that. There we go. Oops. Now in our in our array, we only have three elements remaining because we removed the first element, which is on our what used to be our index zero. And now the index zero is taken up by the orange, and then the one is on apple, and two is taken by the kiwi. That is how shift method works. Of course, if we have something to remove, then we also have a built-in method that we can use to add. And for that, we have the unshift method. And just like the opposite of this one, then it just adds an element at the beginning or the in, at the index zero, and it moves or it pushes everything else to the right. So if we add something here in the beginning, then instead of this orange taking up the index zero, it will be pushed to the right and will now occupy the index one. So let's see that in action. Let's say our fruits method will be unshifted on a shift right there and we'll give it um, the index zero will be taken by lemon here we go and if we try to print out our newly modified fruits array so that's fruits and now let's keep everything in lowercase and now there is a new mo newly modified array we have a lemon at index zero and then um, everything else was shifted to the right because we tried to we pushed something or we shifted something in that first element or in that index zero all right now we've learned how to add and remove at the end of our array and we've learned how to add and remove at the beginning of our array too now what if we want to alter some elements within our array regardless of whether it's at the beginning at the end or even somewhere at the middle so to alter some elements or to change some elements all we have to do is to access those elements whether they be using the index or the add method that we um, discussed here let's say we want to change this lemon right here that we just shifted give it a comment here so that's altering elements so we just get the element that we want to alter through its index that's fruits and i want to alter that lemon or its index so it's just zero and then whatever is the new value that we want uh that to be replaced with so let's say i want this one to be mango instead and let's see that uh take place there we go and now our index zero is a mango so we could also use the add method here if we want it it's just going to be the same uh, result because indexing and using that add method returns the same value all right now we've learned now that we've learned a lot about how we can manipulate one individual array let's say what if we have two arrays and we want to merge those two so let's try creating a new array Let's say we have vegetables this time. Vegetables. Whoopsie. And then let's initialize the values. Maybe we have some carrot there. Um, a squash. There I go maybe a cabbage and lastly um let's say beans if um those are classified as vegetables so there there now we have two arrays we have the fruits area and we have this vegetables array what if you want to combine these two in one array so we have here let me put a note here so this will be merging two arrays with concat concat and that is short for concatenate so the way that we can use concatenate is we have to create a new array or since we already have two we have to create a third array that will contain the merged version of our array because concat always returns a new array it doesn't really change anything uh, with our existing array so let's say we have 
a an array named basket and we want to we want our basket array to have both our fruits and our vegetables so just first get that array that you want uh you want to be listed first so the elements of this array will be listed first in our new array so that's fruits and then that concat and then it will accept the argument of the new array that you want to concatenate it with so we have the vegetables for that and since i've mentioned that this concat method doesn't alter the original um arrays we can still access these fruits array and these vegetable vegetables arrays just fine because we created a third array that will contain these two so let's try to print this out it's going to be basket and there we can see first the elements of our fruits array so that's mango orange apple and kiwi and then the elements of our vegetables are which is in carrots squash cabbage and beans keep in mind that this concat uh, method can accept as many arguments as you want it to have so let's say you have a total of four arrays and you all wanted those arrays to be merged into just one big array you can do that and you say fruits that can get and then vegetables you separate your um array arguments with a comma and then you can type in another another array here or uh, two if you want or even more so it can accept as many arguments as you can give it you separate all of the arguments with a comma so another thing with this um concat method is that you can even concatenate your current array now we are in this basket array with a value or um an element so all you have to do is like i've said earlier you separate your arguments with a comma. Let's say since this is a basket, we want to add a milk in that uh, food basket that we seem to have. And there is our milk in the last index of our new array. So you can use this concatenate if you want to concatenate two arrays or if you want to um, concatenate an array and then add some values there too or just plain values, then you can use the concat uh, method for that as well. All right, now let's imagine a scenario where we want to retrieve or get some uh, elements, some consecutive elements in our array. For that, we have this splice method. So that's splice. Keep in mind that this splice method will alter your original array. So it's going to affect the original array and uh, it's going to return the elements that you've actually removed out. And then although it altered the original array, it's not going to return that original array. It will return the elements that you removed so let's say uh, we want to remove maybe four elements in our basket array all right so to demonstrate the splice method let's create a variable for that so const spliced and let's get our basket array and give it a splice right there so it can accept the first argument that it's going to accept is the index of where you want the splicing to begin. So let's say we want the splicing or the removing to start from this apple right here, which is at index 2. So that will be our first argument. And then the next argument will be how many, how many elements do you want to be removed from our array right here, from our basket array here. So let's say you want uh, two fruits and three vegetables. So that's apple, kiwi, carrot, and then squash. That's four elements. So let's put a four in there. And the splice method uh, returns the removed elements. So let's try to print that and see that in action. Spliced right there. And as I've mentioned earlier, it alters the original um, array. So let's also print out our original uh, basket array there it is so now our spliced array this is, which is this one has a four elements it has a length of four as shown right here and it agrees with our second argument in our splice method so it gave us four elements and now our basket array only has a length of five instead of the original nine right here and it removed all those four 
um, elements that we stated. Now, what if we want, yes, we want to remove some elements, but we want these, um, these things to be replaced by something else. Let's say uh, we want four elements to be removed, but in return, we want uh, something to take the place of those removed elements. The splice arg method can actually take more arguments, so it can also take um, a values argument, which will be the values that will be added in our um, original array. So let's say we have these. Let's say we want to add some lime and maybe honey there. Now, you see here in our, in our uh, basket array, we now have lime and honey that was added starting from the index that we um, started the splice in, which is at index 2. So now we can see that the lime value right there is um, starting at index 2. And then it is followed by honey, which is the one that we stated right there. But let's say, what if you don't want um, any element to be removed at all? You just want this to be stuck, to be placed somewhere there in the middle. Then you just give this a value of zero. And then you can see that now our um, lime and honey was added to our basket array without splicing anything out. And that's why you see our spliced array being empty and has a length of zero as well. And our basket array from, ha from having a length of 9 is now uh, at length 11. Because we did not remove anything, we just added 2. Let's keep this as 4 so that we have something to show for our spliced array. So that is our splice method. Now remember that the splice method alters something in our original array. What if you don't want that to happen? For that, we also have the slice method. So the difference is just it doesn't alter our original array. So let's see that in action. So the splice array, um, or the splice method rather, creates and stores everything as a return value in a new array. So let's try that. Let's say we have basket two here, and whoops, and it's going to be our basket array, but. We just want everything from the, maybe, how many index do we have? So we have 0, 1, 2. Uh, we want everything from this honey right here up to the end of our array. So let's just put in the uh, index for that. And then, oops. And then let's print out our sliced um, array. So that's basket 2. There we go, we have honey, cabbage, beans, and milk. If, if we try to print out our original array again, it did not change at all. And it still has that 7 um, length that it had before we did the slicing. So that's the main difference. But what if we only want to get some um, certain values starting from a certain, certain index and then having just this many... Um, just as many elements or we don't want the we don't want all of the remaining and all of the remaining um, elements we just stop we want to stop the slicing at a certain point so the slice method can actually take um, two arguments so let's see that in action let's create another array and let's say this is now our basket three whoops and it's just our basket array so let's say slice, and of course, we want that it should be slice, not slide. There you go. Of course, the first argument is the start number, as you can see here. So maybe we want uh, um, we want to slice it to set to start from this orange uh, element right here, which is at index one, and then we want it to um, start at a certain index. Maybe you want it to start here, but keep in mind that. The index that you will spe specify as the ending point will not be included. In short terms, it is an exclusive uh, method. So it will include the starting index, but it will not include the element in the ending index. So let's say we want it to have one, two, three, four, four elements. And so we want it to start to stop right here in the bins 
uh, elements. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's put a 5 here. And you might notice that it's not going to include that beans element. So let's try to print that. Our basket, a 3. And there we go. Even though we specified index 5 here, it did not include that uh, element in our fifth index. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That is our uh, index 5 element, and it's not in our sliced array. So that is the basics and actually the intermediate part of our um, arrays discussion. And later on, we're going to see these um, ideas be applied in an actual project or in an actual activity. So we hope to see you in our next video. Thank you so much.